Hi guys, welcome to this new video and today we are talk about the insurance domain and frauds happen in insurance domain and how data science is helping to detect and prevent it. In this video, I will explain about the insurance domain and its frauds. I will also explain about the problem statement of the project along with the structure and the project life cycle. In the end, I will tell about you more resources and projects that you can go through and increase your expertise in the domain knowledge in insurance domain. The insurance industry revolves around the sale of insurance policies to individuals and businesses which provide financial protection against potential losses or damages. Before we dive into the details of the project, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. The insurance industry is a complex and multifaceted one with many different type of policies and coverage options from car insurance to health insurance to life insurance. There are a wide variety of insurance products available to the customers. Insurance fraud can happen at any stage of the process from the sale of the policy to the filing of the claim. Fraud can occur in the insurance industry in a variety of ways, including false claims, fake policies, identity theft. Insurers use a variety of tools and techniques, including data analytics, machine learning to prevent and detect the fraudulent activities. It can also involve individuals or groups and can be uh, by policy holders, insurers or third parties. Given the complexity and the scale of the problem, it is clear that we need a sophisticated tool and techniques to help detect and prevent insurance fraud. Insurance fraud is a serious problem that can cost insurers and policy holders billions of dollars each year. It can take many forms such as false claims, fake policies, identity thefts as I explained in the earlier slide. That's why it is so important to have effective tools and techniques for detecting and preventing insurance frauds. So now question comes, how we detect them? So in this project, our goal is to develop a machine learning model to detect insurance fraud. By analyzing data on past claims and policy holders, we hope to identify patterns and trends that might be indicative of the fraudulent activity. So the problem statement of the project is with the background that in mind, our goal is to develop a machine learning model to detect insurance fraud. We wanted to build a model that could analyze data on the past claims and policy holders and predict likelihood of a claim being fraudulent. This would allow insurers to identify and investigate suspicious claims they are paid out potentially saving millions of dollars in the process. So in the next part, we will talk about the data collection and preparation. The first step in our project was to collect and prepare the data. We gathered a large data set of insurer claims along with information of the policy holders and the claims themselves. This include the data on the type of policy, the policy holders age, location and details of the claims itself. Once we had the raw data, we had to clean it, we had to pre-process it and get it ready for the further analysis. This involves the tasks such as removing the missing values or incorrect values, transforming the data into a format that could be used by our machine learning model. Uh, the next step is data exploration and analysis. With the data cleaned and prepared, we are ready to explore and analyze it. We used a variety of data visualization and statistical techniques to get a better understanding of the data and identify patterns and trends that might be relevant to the detection of fraud. For example, we looked at the distribution of claims by the type of policy and compared the characteristics of the fraudulent and non-fraudulent claims. This allows us to see if certain types of policies or policy holders were more likely to be involved in the fraud. We also check about the outlier detections as well and uh, the pro problems like multicollinearity, the variance reduction kind of things. We can also all things do in the this part, data exploration part. This part also can be known as the EDA part. And the next part is model selection and training. So in, the, in that part, when the, our complete data is ready, we split the data into the test and training. And 
after that we standardize our uh, data as well if there is standardization is required and then we choose the machine learning models required to our problem so in this problem we want to like detect a fraud yes or no so it is a binary classification problem so we only use the classifiers in that machine learning project so we tried a number of different models including decision trees random forest sport vectors machines xgboost and uh, we used a technique called uh, hyperparameter tuning as well to uh, increase the accuracy of the model to find the best parameters and matrices for our machine learning uh, models and the next step is the model evaluation in that part once we uh, do all the things with the models like uh, uh, training and testing all things like that we have to evaluate our models like how they perform on the uh, training data sets as well so in that part we got to know that which machine learning model is best for our project and which is not so at, at the end of that we evaluate our all the 11 machine learning algorithms and find out the best model for our uh, project so guys let's just start with the project so we have a project of the insurance fraud detection with the data set that contains the all the information about the customers their uh, amounts policies age and the date of their joining and everything is there so we have to like uh, analyze the data set first the first step is to like clean the things and pre-process transform and then do some kind of analysis on that like data visualizations outlier detections all the things are done here and at the end we will implement like all the 11 algorithms that i talk about and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, evaluate those algorithms as well and find the most suitable algorithms for this problem so let's just start with it so uh, here we have like first i uh, import like all the libraries that are required like pandas numpy matplotlib like that and uh, i upload a data set and then i can check the data set have like some kind of uh, like unwanted values like this question mark so i have to replace this question mark with the nan value so i just do do the replacement for my uh, data as well and then i check for my data information like uh, describing for uh, checking, checking some kind of uh, uh, statistical measures and the information about it has to check the data types should have correct as well so like i don't want like many uh, in any kind of a column who is an integer but have the data type of the object so this thing i need to check and uh, along with i have to check the number of uh, uh, null values in any kind of a column so i can see that there are some columns that have the null values as well and those columns are mostly the categorical columns only and uh, so i have to like get the percentage of the uh, missing values in those columns so i can see that the most number of uh, null values are in the property damage column so this column we don't require and we can easily drop it in the further uh, analysis and uh, then i can uh, fill those three columns uh, uh, with the mod of their uh, values uh, so that they can be used and uh, then uh, i have to check for the correlation to check about the multicollinearity problems so as you can see that there are like some columns who have the multicollinearity in there uh, so we have to like uh, uh, drop uh, some of these co uh, columns as well to uh, reduce the problem of uh, multicollinearity and uh, then we have to check for the unique values in the, each of the categorical columns because uh, if, if if column has like more number of unique values then the variance of that column is so much high it it will add like so much noise in our uh, data set so we have to like uh, remove those kind of uh, columns as well and after doing all these an an analysis as well i got to know, know that uh, these columns are that i should uh, rem uh, remove from my data set to proceed with the further analysis and after removing these uh, uh, columns as well i have like only these columns left and now i have to like uh, check with the problem of multicollinearity as you can see the age column and the months as customer column have the very high correlation along with the correlation of the like a total claim amount with the vehicle claim property claim injury claim these columns are also have the very high multicollinearity as well so we have to like uh, remove those co columns uh, as well so for that i can do the uh, drop these columns like age or total, total claim amount because when, when we are uh, dealing with the problem of multicollinearity we don't have to delete all the columns 
if we just delete a one or two columns from them the multicolorality problems can be solved so i have two only things like that and uh, after that uh, i just do the uh, get the target variable in a single variable and the independent variable the other variables and then do the uh, standardizations and uh, the uh, one hot encodings as well all these kind of things so the first thing i do is the one hot encoding so all the category variables that i used i uh, i can make them uh, into the numerical by using the one hot encoding and uh, then i check for my numerical uh, columns as well and then i concatenate both of them to make a complete independent variable data set and then i check for the out outliers as well and so uh, and uh, there are like some kind of outliers are there i think in this columns or uh, in uh, other kind of uh, columns are there so we can easily uh, remove those outliers by using the uh, uh, standard scaler so you are using the scaling those values so for that first i need to like uh, split my data set into the test and training samples and uh, then i have to uh, do the scaling process and for the scaling process always re uh, remember you can do the scaling only on the training data as fit transform but on the test you can only do the transform because uh, uh, otherwise it will do the problem of the data leakage so that will i can do with the help of like uh, this is my training data this is my uh, testing uh, kind of uh, data as well i do the all the standardizations here and uh, after that i started the modeling process uh, so in that uh, uh, phase we first use the support vector classifier so in this we can uh, call the svc from the sklearn library add my machine learning models and then after that i can check for the score of my training and my testing as well and then i can know that my uh, data set is uh, underfitting or overfitting and then you can check the score of the confusion matrix and also the classification uh, report as well as you can see it uh, gave me a testing accuracy of 0.7 that means it is 7.77% of the uh, accuracy of the model and you can use the k nearest uh, neighbor model by using the same approach and uh, it also gave me 77% accuracy in the testing phase along with the uh, decision tree cl uh, classifier as well so it has also gave me the 0.3 that is a very less so here i use the concept of hyper parameter tuning by using the grid search cv in using the grid search cv i got to know that these are my basic parameters and my best score is 80% so you, uh, you see that uh, the impact of the uh, hyper parameter tuning on a model is like very high you can get the best parameters for your model you can get the best accuracy as well so after doing that i get the accuracy of 84% approximate on my test results and uh, then i use the random forest uh, classifier as well and in that i use the same approach because i get a accuracy of 82% here on the test data and then i use the ada boost uh, classifier by using the grid uh, search uh, cv as well and then i after using the so as you see that it, it gives me the accuracy of the 80% approx and then also on the uh, test data i give me accuracy of the 84 so that is also a very great algorithm as well for the gradient boosting it gave me a very less accuracy but uh, after i use the stochastic gradient boosting it gave me 27 so that means that these two models are not uh, are not like uh, comfortable for my uh, this kind of a project and then i try with the xg boost and for the xg boost as well it gave me the accuracy of 73% but yeah if i use the grid search cv as well on that uh, uh, on that uh, execution algorithms, I will get the great, great accuracy, and you see it will be the 84%. So that that means that by using the like most uh, uh, like uh, advanced algorithms as well, we can get only the accuracy of 84%. That is the highest till now. And then I use the cat boost algorithms as well. It gave me the 69% accuracy. That is uh, very less than. And for the uh, extra t regressor, 83%. And then I use the voting classifier. So the voting classifier will do the one thing it will take all the classifiers and then all the classifiers are added and then you used into the uh, voting classifier and then it will give us the combined accuracy that is 84.8 and i think that is the uh, highest accuracy we achieved until now and then i use the model comparison to get the most uh, uh, 
uh, accurate machine learning model that is the voting classifier that used all the class classifiers and then uh, can combine their scores and and then uh, give people the accuracy so uh, that's it in that uh, complete uh, uh, project and uh, i hope you guys uh, enjoy this project and we can uh, uh, talk about some more uh, insurance check uh, uh, resources as well in my next slide so that is the scope so guys, uh, here is a project also that is a uh, insurance price forecasting using XGBoost Regressor. And in this project, we are uh, trying to forecast the uh, uh, price of the policy so that the com company can be able to uh, strategize their uh, premium plan for the customers for maximizing the benefits as well. You can uh, go through these websites on the site of the Project Pro as well. And they, it has a complete end-to-end -end project with all the EDA analysis, statistical analysis along with machine learning project and at the end containerization as well. And uh, in our next project we see it is the Allstate Insurance Claims Preventive Prediction. And this project is helps to uh, uh, like uh, especially helps to uh, like know about the uh, type of claim which are like uh, coming more to the company so that the com company can be uh, get all the resources required before an uh, unforeseen event can have happen so uh, this project is also like a very good and in this you can learn so much about the insurance domain and uh, and uh, about the data science and machine learning uh, as well so i hope you guys like uh, uh, like all these three projects and uh, i hope you guys learn uh, something from it and uh, uh, thank you guys thank you so much mm -hmm.